Have you ever seen tennis played on blue clay before? Apparently it happened once. Ah, tennis. The sport with a history so rich and old to make anyone think twice about ever changing any fundamental aspect of the game. We know how it goes. There are three court surfaces. Grass courts, commonly associated with olden tennis and still used professionally throughout Europe in the summer months. Hey, Wimbledon. There are clay courts, the most widely used surface throughout the world with slight variance in color and texture. And of course, the tried and true hard courts, most likely found at your local park and high school due to the lack of maintenance needed for its use. Makes it's sense. all so simple. So what the hell is this? Have, have any of you heard about this before? Because I've certainly never heard of it. Um, never seen blue clay. Before all the controversy and threats of boycotting by the sport's biggest stars, all of this started as an idea in the mind of this man, Ion Thidiak. Yeah, Thidiak, he looks like a billionaire business mogul is the owner of the Madrid Open, a premier professional tennis tournament which attracts the biggest names in tennis. Before his venture into business though, Thidiak had a colorful sports past as an international child table tennis champion, eventually becoming a member of the Romanian Olympic ice hockey team, and finally settled as a professional tennis player, winning the 1970 French Open doubles with... To be fair, that's a fairly, um, a unique route to getting into tennis. It's a fair play to the bloke. Former great Ilya Nastasi. By all means, the Romanian loved to push boundaries and set new heights for both himself and whatever venture he threw himself into. Despite his successful main career in banking, he stayed invested in tennis throughout his life, serving as a professional coach, manager, agent, committee president, and eventually in 2009, became the owner and organizer of the this Madrid Open, to that transforming the tournament life. from a hardcore end of the year event to the red clay spectacle that defines the European tennis swing every spring. The change was an instant success, and everyone was perfectly happy and content with the way things turned out. Almost everyone, that is. You see, around this time, the worldwide tennis landscape was changing, literally. When watching tennis on TV, many find it hard to keep track of the tiny yellow ball flying across a similarly colored court. So in 2005, the US Open in New York City, one I've of the biggest tennis tournaments in the world, it. changed colors from its trademark green to blue. Instantly, the sport became easier to watch on television and the reception was positive. Sense, it does seem to Following make suit, a the Australian Open, another main event, pulled a similar move in 2008, changing colors from green to blue in the midst of court renovations. 2007 saw the move from green to purple in Miami, red courts in Bogota in 2013, and somehow this is still a thing. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> please, you're telling me they played with that? It just looks like a Tetris board. This is still a thing. Suddenly, tennis wasn't so monochromatic and this early 2000s hardcore color renaissance caught the attention of Mr. Thidiak, it does make who it in quite 2012 cool to watch was looking for ways colors. to make his tournament more interesting on TV. This wouldn't be the first time, as in 2004 he decided to replace all teenage ball kids with adult fashion models, <laughs> a change that didn't go down well at the time. Under I'm starting to like this bloke. <laughs> what a genius move to get people watching. Turned by the fact that his tournament was held on clay courts and not hard courts, the idea of blue clay was born. To quickly explain the science required for the change, normal red clay used at almost every single European clay court event is composed of crushed red bricks, scattered mm. across courts in two separate layers. According I to Thidiac, the blue clay used in 2012 was identical to red clay, the only difference being that during manufacturing, the naturally occurring iron they oxide that creates the normal red color was stripped from the crushed brick, creating a bleached white powder. Oh, Blue dye is then used to no. complete the process. Reportedly, this change in color cost Thidiac double what red clay is normally purchased for, an expense he held was worth the extra cost. He's definitely so, got the money. you have a positive shift like in public to perception about. towards colored tennis courts, a tournament willing to put down extra funds to create a better viewing experience for fans, and a billionaire tennis fanatic using his time and resources to make sure it all comes together. What could go wrong? Well, how much time you got? 
and I'll, we'll find how much. It's not a long video, we should be all right. To start, since the idea's inception in 2011, Blue Clay found little support among the players, with Federer saying, keep the red clay, obviously those kind of things. Grass doesn't become orange, it would all be strange. Soon enough though, the blue clay was ratified for use as a permanent feature, starting with the 2012 edition of the Madrid Open. Upon the announcement, Nadal tweeted, It's a shame because of the history and tradition of the surface. I hope I don't have to play one day on blue grass. Thidiak though was convinced that once the pair play tested the surface, they would be converted saying, As far as Nadal and Federer, they are great tennis players and great human beings. I respect their opinion, but I don't have to accept everything one player says. Eventually, Judgment Day came when players arrived in Madrid to begin the... To, to be fair, you would think that's a fair comment by this bloke because they, at the start of this video, they give the history on him and they did say he was a tennis player. He did win things. So you would like to think he's, he's got... His opinion means something at least. Tournament. And already, things began to fall apart. Despite the Madrid Open's popularity in recent years, one issue that had repeatedly dogged the tournament were its soft and uneven courts due to poorly installed drainage systems, allowing water to unevenly flow after rain and waterings. The blue clay suffered the exact same issues but with more severity, as a combination of heavy rain and heat waves prior to opening day all but baked the clay base into a surface that was much harder than it should have been. Adding to this, salt laid down on top of the courts to keep moisture away and retain color ended up crystallizing into an unbreakable film due to the extreme weather, making traction while sliding almost impossible and creating conditions similar to that of a slip and slide. Oh, we've got to go back and watch that. You said, uh, how many times have players slipped and, and injured themselves in tennis? And it's that impact tear and I bet it's painful, but let's just watch this again. Action while sliding almost impossible and creating conditions similar to that of a slip and slide. This became extremely apparent splits. after world number two Rafael Nadal's opening win, saying, The surface doesn't feel comfortable. It's complicated, very slippery. It's difficult to keep your balance. I hope that next year they change it. Number one ranked Novak Djokovic shared the same thoughts after he dropped a set in his opening match, stating, Not a single player, not a woman, not a man. I didn't hear anyone say, I like blue clay. I think in, in a lot of sports, um, players can make excuses for losing. But when everyone is saying it, you know, that adds a little bit of weight to the comments, doesn't it? The courts clearly favored offensive players such as Roger Federer, as those who stuck around the baseline and moved less found the issues much less apparent. This is a contradiction to what Clay is normally known for typically giving the advantage to defensive players whose game revolves around longer, slower points. Tempers rose to a fever pitch when Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic were knocked out in the third round and quarterfinals respectively, a stark departure from the previous year where they had faced off in the final. The semifinals on blue clay proved what many had already assumed. With four offensive, heavy-hitting baseliners making it to the final four, blue clay had fundamentally changed what made clay, clay. It wasn't just a color change, it was a change in how a tennis match had to be played. That certainly seems um, strange because for me personally, I see Federer as a grass player. And you, you can see that with the amount of times he's won Wimbledon. So for him to be at the final for this, after what they're saying, how clay should normally behave, it seems very strange. Um, because he's certainly got a different style of play to, to say, Nadal. Play it to win. Even after Federer lifted the first and only blue clay trophy to probably ever exist, he still trophy. went on to say, It is tough to move, but you just get on with it and try to make the best out of it. To the surprise of absolutely no one, when you win it. weeks later the Association of Tennis Professionals, or ATP, banned blue clay for all 2013 events, a decision met with unanimous praise by all players and industry leaders. Nadal would go on to win the 2013's title on red clay, and he and Djokovic would eventually win five of the next seven Madrid titles while Federer has never made it to the finals since the year clay was blue. So, will we ever see blue clay again? Or any other strangely colored non-hardcourt surface? Tennis is no stranger to gimmicks and stunts designed to draw in viewers, and changing court color is no different. While I'm sure we'll witness some interesting changes to how tennis is played going forward, 
There's no doubt that many will forget that fateful year Eon Thidiac had the balls to turn red clay blue. That's interesting. I, I enjoy listening to these um, these videos where they say something that happened and it was such a failure. Do you know of any other other big failures in sports where they've tried to change something? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Hope you liked it. Like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.